Hi, in this video we're going to have a look at systematic lists and these systematic lists help us to find the sample space. Now if I say to you, what is the sample space of rolling a die? The sample space is represented with curly brackets and what outcomes can we get when we roll a die? We could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So this is a sample space and in particular when rolling a die. So the sample space we have to use curly brackets and then we list all the outcomes. Now systematic lists including tables and tree diagrams help us when we're looking at multi-stage events. So if I said to you list the st sample space when rolling two die or list the sample space when tossing two coins or list the sample space when rolling a die and tossing a coin. So let's do an example. Let's first look at tables. So if I said here as an example, let's find the sample space when tossing two coins and we're going to use a table for this example. So here let's do a table Now, the first coin could either be a head or it could be a tail. The second coin could be a head or a tail. Nothing needs to go in this little box here. So the first coin on the top row could be a head or a tail. Then down the side it could also be a head or a tail. So here I might even do this. I'm going to write the top one. So this is the first coin. It could be a head. It could be a tail. So when you toss two coins, you here would get the, a head and a head. Here you'd get a head and a tail. Down here you'd get a tail and a head. Over here, you'd get a tail and a tail. So there are four, okay, what we say elements in our sample space. Up here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six elements in our sample space. So in this case, the sample space for tossing two coins, curly brackets, two heads, head, tail, tail, head, or tail, tail. And it makes sense. If you Think about tossing a coin. Both of them might be heads. One might be a head, one might be a tail. The other one might be a tail, the other one might be a head. Or they might both be tails. So this is one way of using a table. Let's do another quick example of using a table. So let's say two dice are rolled. And... their sum is recorded. So for example, if you roll a 1 and a 2, you add that up and you get 1 plus 2 equals 3. Let's use a table to show this. So the first dice here could be, you could get a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, 5 or a 6. The second die, you could also get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And this here is all about the sum. So up here, I'm going to put a plus because we are adding. Okay, it is adding, addition. Fix that up, it's plus. So now we think about this. We think about what is 1 plus 1? 1 plus 1 is 2. What is 2 plus 1? Get rid of that. 2 plus 1 is 3. And so on. 3 plus 1 is 4, 5, 6, and 7. You can see the pattern. Let's go to the next row. We have got, I'll just get rid of the highlight. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 2 plus 1 equals 
2 plus 2 is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3 and 1 is 4, 3 and 2 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see the pattern there. 4 and 1 is 5, 4 and 2 is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 6 and 1 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can actually see here that the same number runs the diagonal. All the 7s have a diagonal, all, all the 3s diagonal there, 4s diagonal, and so on. So we're just representing the sample space in a table here. And a common question is, they might say to you, what's the probability of the sum of two dice equaling two? Well, how many twos are in this table? There's only one two here. Only one. You have to roll two ones to add up to two. So the probability of rolling a two equals one out of how many? How many outcomes do we have here? We've got six by six. Six times six is the 36. So there's one 36th of a chance of getting a two when you add up the sum. This, though, will come in a later video as well. We're all just talking now about the tables and representing the sample space. Let's have a look at tree diagrams. So a tree diagram, let's do this again. Let's do tossing two coins. So tossing two coins, we're going to find the sample space using a tree diagram. Tree diagrams always start at a point. We need to think about the first coin. What are the outcomes? It could be a head or a tail. Could either be a head or a tail. What about the second coin? It could be a head or a tail. A head or a tail. So a tree diagram always starts at a point. You think about the first event, which is the first coin, the second event, which is the second coin. This is a multi-stage event. So now we can see here, if we go along here, head and a head gives us HH. Head and a tail. Head, tail. Fix that up. Tail and a head. Tail and a head. And also we've got tail, tail. So again, from here, the sample space is still going to be HH, don't forget those Kelly brackets, heads, tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails, which is the same as what we got up here. So here we can see that we can use tables or tree diagrams to find the sample space of a multi-stage event. Let's have a look at another example. So let's say a coin is tossed and a die is rolled. Part A, let's construct a tree diagram to represent this. Construct a tree diagram. Part B, we are going to list the sample space. List the sample space. So remember, a tree diagram always starts at a point. We need to think about the first event. The first event is a coin is tossed. What are the outcomes of tossing a coin? It could be heads or tails. So this is the coin. Now the second event is the die. How many outcomes are there when rolling a die? There are six. So here I need one, two, three, four, five, six branches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Try and make it big and space it out as much as you can. I'm even going to fix this up. This is the die. There's the one. Again, one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. So, think about it. If you toss a coin, the coin might land on head, and it might land on two. So you might get a head and a two. So H and two. You might get a head and a one, head and three, head and four, head and five, head and six. Or you might get a tail and one, tail and two, tail and three, tail and roll a four, tail and roll a five, and tail and roll a six. So here, what I've done here is also a sample space. So sample space, we're going to list it out though in our curly brackets. H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. I'm just going to come underneath so I can fit it all in here, but you can keep it going in a line. T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. If I asked you how many elements are in the sample space, you would say there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 elements in the sample space. So when finding the sample space, make sure you use brackets. We can use tree diagrams or tables to find the sample space. That's it for this video. Well done.